So here we go, we're going to try and sketch the polynomial. Um, negative x cubed, take 8x squared, take 5x plus 50. So we're going to start with the factor theorem and trial and error to find our first factor. So we're going to look for polynomial 1, which would be negative of 1 cubed, take 8 of 1 squared, take 5 lots of 1, plus 50. So we've got negative 1, take 8, take 5, plus 50, equals 36. Doesn't equal 0, not a factor. Let's try negative 1. So then we've got negative of negative 1 cubed, take 8 of negative 1 squared, take 5 of negative 1, plus 50. That's the same as negative of negative 1. Take 8 lots of 1. Take 5 lots of negative 1. Plus 50. Which equals 48. That's not a equal to 0. So x plus 1. Not a factor. I probably should have written up here. Sorry. I will try that. Um, x take 1 wasn't a factor. And we'll try... So we've got negative of 2 cubed, take 8 lots of 2 squared, take 5 lots of 2 plus 50. So I've got negative 2 cubed, which is 8, take 8 lots of 4, take 5 lots of 2 plus 50 equals 0. is a factor. So we're going to long divide. So we're going to have x take 2 over here into our polynomial. Now I know you all hate negative numbers, which is why I've oops, decided to do this example. So x into negative x cubed goes negative x squared times. Remember, you can think about it as, what do I need to times this by to get that? Then multiply backwards. We've got negative x squared times x is negative x cubed. Negative x squared times negative 2 is positive 2x squared. Take that away. This take, this is nothing. Negative 8 take 2 is negative 10x squared. Draw this down. What do I need to multiply x by to get negative 10x squared? That's negative 10x. Multiply it out. Negative 10x squared. Negative 10 times negative 2 is positive. 20x. Draw down. Oops, sorry. Jump the gun. This take this is nothing. Negative 5 take 20 is negative 25x. Now draw that down. Plus 50. x into negative 25x. Nothing, 50 take 50 is 0. So that means my polynomial can be divided into my divisor and my quotient. So I'm going to rewrite my polynomial in factored form. I've got x minus 2 times by negative x squared take 10, x take 25. Now, this is a linear one, keep it that way. This is quadratic and I would like to um, try and factorise it. Now I find it a little difficult to factorise when I've got a negative in front of my x squared. So a little trick to this, keep this as negative, sorry, x take 2. Take out a common factor of negative 1 and then this becomes x squared plus 10x plus 25. Now you could do it the other way, it's okay, but it's just a lot easier to deal with and do cross method when it's all positive. There, 
This is x minus 2. I can keep my negative 1 there for now. I'll tidy that up later. And if I look at this, I want something that multiplies to make 25. That adds to make 10. And that's pretty easy to see that it's 5 and 5. So I'm just going to tidy this all up and make this a little simpler. I'm going to bring my negative out the front. I'm going to drop the 1. I'm going to have my x take 2. And then because I've got x plus 5 and x plus 5, and that factor appears twice, I'm going to write it as x plus 5 squared. So I notice here that I'm going to have, um, if I use the null factor law, I'm going to have 0 equals... Oh, actually, I'll stop there for a second. Now, using the null factor law, um, 0 equals one of these factors. Now, 0 can't equal negative 1, so we ignore that. We say 0 must equal x take 2, in which case x equals positive 2. Then we say 0 equals x plus 5, in which case x equals negative 5. Now that factor appears twice. I don't need to use the null factor twice to prove it, I just do it once. But I know in my head that this has a multiplicity of 2, which means it's a toucher or a bouncer. Okay, this has a multiplicity of 1, so it's a cutter. All right, what else do I need to find out? I need my y-intercept. My y-intercept, my vertical intercept happens when x equals zero. Now going back up to the top, that means I'm going to have a negative of zero cubed. Take eight of zero squared. Oh, running out of space, times five lots of zero. Oh, I'll write it on the next line, plus 50. This is 0, take 0, take 0, plus 50 equals 50. Alright, so my y-intercept 50. Now going back to my original equation, my leading term is negative x cubed. My leading coefficient is a negative 1. So it's a negative, which means I expect my end behaviour to be negative. So let's have a look. Here are my points. My y-intercept happens at 50. So here we go, there's a y. Let's say this is 50. It's got to be pretty high up. And x. All right, my, I had x equals 2. And I had x equals negative 5. I might just draw this out a little bit more. So let's say this is negative 5. Let's say this is 2. Okay, so... My negative 5 was a multiplicity of 2, it was a toucher, okay, my 2 was a cutter, and it's got n behaviour that is negative, so ultimately it has to come down this way. So it must start up the top, must touch my 5, come back through somewhere, has to go through that 50 point, and come down this way. Just rub out that little extra arrow that I had before to tell me where to go. I'm not really happy with the shape of my curve here, so I might just change that a little bit. Now I don't know where the turning point is exactly, so this turning point could have come up. I don't know that. The only way at this point we can figure that out is by using our graphics calculator, but we don't need to worry about that. So there we go.